Okay guys, uh, for today's video, got a little something a little bit different for you. Uh, it is a uh, thermostat out of um, one of our mobile homes. So and people that are familiar with the channel, have been around for a while, know that uh, I also do real estate. Um, so this one's actually out of one of my father's properties. It's not one of mine, uh, but let's take a look at it real quick and see what's going on with it. Put some batteries back in here. This is a really cheap one, so it's not a big deal if we can't fix it, but it says it's 59 degrees here in my office, but it's actually 72. It's pretty humid in here too. Um, so there's really just a, a couple of things that would cause this in one of these cheaper units like these. Um, this one's not so old that we're dealing with like mercury in it. We're, we just have a thermistor in there. Uh, and it generally will have like a potentiometer on it. So it's going to be one of two things. Either the potentiometer has drifted and we just need to adjust that or we have a uh, bad thermistor. So let's uh, open it up real quick and uh, take a look. So let's go ahead and take these batteries back out of it. And some of, so, some of these kind of things are just clipped together and you just pulled apart. Uh, this one's actually screwed together. It looks like we only have two screws to deal with to get it apart. Okay, so uh, as soon as we open it up, we, we can see uh, exactly where it's at. It, we have a potentiometer right here, and there's a little thermistor just float, floating in the air there. So, so this is, in fact, just a thermistor uh, that, that we have to deal with in here. So we can tear it down even further, see if there's a second one, because sometimes I'll use two, uh, but I believe this one only has one. But let's just go ahead and take this board all the way off, because it's not that complicated to get apart here. Okay, and there's a view of the front end. So it looks like all that we have on the front are just a couple of switches, buttons, and some cat caps uh, that look like, yep, they're on the input rail here. So um, just come straight up, 3.3 volts, goes to the, uh, to these caps right here. It's a 10 volt, 470 UF um, electrolyte cap. Okay, so let me zoom in, because you can see there is a factory mark on there where they tuned it from the factory. So when once they tuned it, they just took a Sharpie and just kind of went across it there. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're not too far off from where the factory tune was. So you know, sometimes you just get that, that tenant that's just an absolute jerk and they come in and they mess with things. That does not appear to be uh, what the problem is here. Uh, so let's go ahead and go, we're just gonna adjust the potentiometer real quick and just go all the way um, the opposite direction and see what we get, see if that brings us uh, to where we need to be. All right, so now it says it is 80 degrees in here. Well, we're actually dealing with 72. So yeah, it looks like it's just the potentiometer uh, and probably not a bad thermistor. So let's, uh, let's just adjust this. Let's, uh, Keep adjusting it until we get the right temperature. Uh, so we'll just do that. Seventy nine, so still too high. Oh, sixty two. We've gone too far down. Okay, so uh, now it's been about a week uh, since I started recording this. Uh, so the the uh, potentiometer on here, so this potentiometer on here, you are able to adjust it to get uh, pretty close to, to accurate. We're, we're only off by a degree and a half, which really isn't anything to complain about. Um, but if you, if you really bump the uh, potentiometer at all or anything like that, it... Uh, it, it moves so uh, pretty significantly. So um, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, the, the potentiometer is going bad because we're. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but we're about uh, 20 degrees off from the factory mark on here. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely seems to go be going bad. 
I wasn't going to buy a replacement one for it um, because it's just such a cheap uh, unit. It really isn't, you know, necessary to, to replace this and, and do the work to actually fix it. Uh, but I've run into a couple of repairs recently that I needed one of these like kits of random potentiometers. So I just went ahead and bought it. So that way, that way I had it on hand. Um, so let's, uh, let's get this one off of here. So that way we can, we can replace it and put the new one on. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, get these batteries out so that way we can get it done. But yeah, you can see it floats all over on the temperature. So it's, the temperature has gone up about 0.2 degrees in the office here and it has varied from 68 to 70 degrees now. Now part of that's probably because I keep getting my hands close to it, but it's it's varied a lot. So let's go ahead and get this off of here. Um, let's kind of wait for these. Oh, uh, uh, yep, it's over here. Okay, well, I got the potentiometer off, but it uh, fell into the void of forever gone on the floor. So it'll it'll turn up here in six months when I sweep the floor or something. So, oh well, that's gone. Um, yeah, I really I really can't stand when uh, many when the little kids on the factory line that pr produce things bend the legs down. Uh, it makes it really hard to get them off. So that was a twenty k ohm because it was two zero three. Uh, so this should be, yep. By the way, I really don't like the way they print these. So it's, uh, here we go. Let's see if it'll focus. 203, or if you rotate the other way, it's, um, E02. So, uh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> I wish, I wish they made the, uh, three more clearly a three and not an E. Um, but that's, that's just me. All right. That was the wrong side. That was, that went this way. All right. It's been just one down, so that way we can solder the other two, and then we'll bend it back up right. All right. So, yeah, just going to um, solder these two down. And we're going to bend that other one back upright. And solder it down. Okay, so that's it. Let's put the batteries back into it so that way we can start adjusting it. All right, definitely got it a little high there. Well, we're definitely dealing with the fact that we just soldered to the area, so it's hot. So, um, yeah, let's come back in a couple of minutes and <laughs> take a look at it. But, yeah, with the uh, the rheostat, or not rheostat, with the uh, thermistor being hot from uh, soldering to the, to the potentiometer next to it. Okay, so I uh, stuck the circuit board in front of a fan for about two or three minutes. We're down, so, yeah, it should... I, like I said, pretty sure it was set low since it was reading pretty close to correct, uh, even though I knew the whole circuit board was hot. So let's uh, adjust that a little bit, and we'll just keep adjusting it until we get to 70 degrees. There is a delay in between each adjustment and it registering on the screen, so don't worry when you like adjust and then... It's, it's just like the anti-slosh on a gas tank for an instrument cluster or something, you know. It keeps it from jumping up and down a lot. So uh, you just kind of slowly adjust it until you get it to the right temperature. So I'm going to give it uh, a little bit of time and just keep adjusting it off camera until I get it set right. And then I'll, I'll show it. So uh, just give me a minute here to, to get this set right. Um, just got to, because there it, it takes time and I, I don't think y'all really want to just sit there and wait as I keep doing small uh, adjustments to it. Okay, so I got it tuned in. We are 70.4 on here. 70 because this one doesn't do a decimal on there. Probably should go up to 71, go down to 69, and then go in, in between on that. But eh, it it's accurate enough. It's within a degree. Uh, so as close as I could get 
with the old potentiometer was two degrees. Uh, I, that, that was really as close as I could get, a degree and a half to two degrees of accuracy. And I had to max out all the way uh, this direction on it. So let's, let's put this on an ohm meter and take a look and see what exactly was going on with it. Cause it's definitely gone bad. Uh, and we'll, we'll just see uh, what exactly uh, we get out of it. But yeah, that's, that's it for this. Let's get this put back together and then we'll, uh, we'll test that out on the, um, ohm, uh, on the ohm meter. Probably should take the batteries out for uh, putting the screws back in, but uh, yeah, I just want to be done with this. <laughs> so I'm just going to put these on and hopefully I don't drop one and kill the whole circuit. Okay, and back together, and yep, yeah, 0.1 degree difference there, rounds up to, to 70. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely a successful repair. I'm going to call that done, so I can go ahead and pull the batteries out of this. And uh, I only repaired this because I had already tested it um, beforehand, where I made sure everything else worked. So, you know, it was reading, it, it was like 60 degrees in the trailer that I pulled it out of, and it was reading like 46 degrees, so I turned cool on and set it to 46 degrees and it kicked on and then did heat set it to above it and there you go you it click kicked on you could hear the relay kick and the ac did kick on uh because it, it was in the unit so yeah definitely it's it's a working ac uh, uh thermostat you know obviously this is a cheap thermostat so had there been anything majorly wrong with it wouldn't have been economically viable to repair it uh, but, uh, this, this one, it was a very simple repair. Uh, I bought the whole kit of, um, different potentiometers here, uh, assorted values for $7. So yeah, this, this repair cost me all of $7, uh, to, to get this back up and completely accurate. So happy with the way that repair went. I already needed one of these kits because sometimes amplifiers have uh, little tuning pots on them and they'll, they'll get uh, out of range too. So let's uh, take the multimeter and actually take a look at the uh, old potentiometer that was on there, see if we can diagnose it, um, just you know verify our problem. We already know it was a problem, but we'll just verify it again, take a look at it. We'll actually open it up too and see if we can repair just that uh, potentiometer if I didn't lose it again, because I'm, uh, there it is, I'm not seeing it. So let's test it and then we'll take it apart uh, and see if we can clean it and put it back together. These small ones are pretty hard to get back together, so it probably will not be a successful uh, repair of putting it back together. All right, so got the multimeter out. Let's put it in the ohm range, and I couldn't find my other one, the red. Okay, got it propped up, so there's no glare. So uh, yeah, we got it hooked up to the potentiometer, and we get um, 56 k ohms right now, roughly, uh, kind of drifting around here. Go through it here. Um, we go down to 45, and then we get a lot of open circuit throughout too. So we really just have from 60 to 52 uh, K ohms going on with this potentiometer. So definitely uh, a bad potentiometer here. Um, yeah, we, we you know, and we're drifting all around with it too. The whole time it's, it's just drifting. So uh, definitely a bad potentiometer. Now these things potentially can be fixed. Uh, th this one probably beyond the reasonable, uh, you know, a reasonable person to repair this. Uh, you, you probably just, it's a, it's a cheap component, just replace it. Uh, but yeah, you, Open them up. So then once you get it open, 
uh, you have the little wiper there. It's generally just got some corrosion on it. And then you have this, um, uh, it's gonna be like a carbon film on it. Uh, the, the way you do clean them up is then you take like some deoxid, uh, clean it and put it back together. Um, let's try that and just see if uh, we get a working potentiometer out of it once we're done. Uh, I, I would not reuse this one. Just again, they're such a cheap part. Uh, you should just replace them uh, when they're like this. But sometimes you get into like amplifiers and soundboards and whatever, and they have like really expensive uh, trim pots and stuff in them. And those those generally are worth uh, cleaning up and trying to fix. So they they actually make uh, deoxit makes a different cleaner for potentiometers uh, specifically. I don't uh, have any of it. Uh, but, um, yeah, and, and mine's deoxid, not deoxid. Um, so then you, you go back on there. It's pretty easy to tell, uh, which way is the correct way to go back on just because of the, uh, ground over here. Let's bend that back out a little bit. All right. And then bend these back down. All right, got it reasonably in place. Really should put it in like a vise. I don't have one anymore. So I don't I don't actually have a vise anymore. So let's uh, go ahead and see if we got it on there good. And uh, just give it another test run. We'll be throwing this out as soon as I'm done anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Just worth showing that potentiometers can be you know cleaned up and repaired. So still drifting a little bit and definitely still out of range. But we're getting closer to, to the actual 20K that we, we wanted, but eh, still now we're back up to 40. Yeah, so we didn't successfully repair this one, but it, it is, potentiometers can be repaired. I'm just not going to put a lot of effort into uh, fixing this one. Um, so that went into the parts bin uh, just to get recycled the other scrap electronics. But uh, so yeah, that's really all I had for this video, repairing the, the uh, thermostat and just taking a look at the potentiometer to see if we could or could not fix it. I figure it's uh, worth just taking a look at that. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I, I know this isn't what I normally do on the channel. Uh, well, I mean, I, I normally fix electronics, but normally don't get as much random stuff on here. It generally stays automotive. But, uh, you know, I had it, so I figured it's worth uh, showing. Uh, hopefully somebody finds this video useful and is able to fix their own uh, AC controller for a whole lot less than replacing it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one.